Hello and welcome all to this informative discussion with Professor Chetan Solanki and Team Shunya. We welcome our chief guest, Dr. Chetan Singh Solanki, a professor from IIT Bombay, brand ambassador for of solar energy for government of MP, and founder of Energy Swaraj Foundation. He has undertaken Energy Swaraj Yatra from November 2020 through a solar bus for 11 years until 2030. From Team Shunya, we have Prabhat Sharma. Deputy Project Engineer. With all of us trying to go green and achieve sustainability in some manner, in this world of depleting natural resources, let us begin with sustainability. What are your views on sustainability, and how necessary is it for us? Well, it's very simple that uh, if we want human life to be there on this planet for. Uh, Long, long time to come. Long time in thousands of years, and it has to be sustainable, isn't it? Which means that uh, you live in a manner that you do not disturb the house, right? Then your house is sustainable. You live in the manner on this planet in a manner that you do not disturb the planet. And this planet is a small ball hanging in the air, isn't it? Uh, and this is the only one such ball hanging in the air. There's, you know, in the Billions of galaxies. There's only one galaxy that is ours, Milky Way. Within Milky Way, there are billions of stars, and only one star is ours, our sun. Around the sun, also there are many planets, but there is only one planet of ours, the Earth, where life is possible, and that too very thin layer around the Earth. So, among the billions and billions of you know uh, the stars that are available and planets that are available, there's only one place where. human life is possible so first of all we should treat it with a great respect isn't it there's no other place anywhere you have not found a life anywhere else so it is i think it is our duty to ensure that we are sustaining which means that let us not disturb the house that we are living in and uh, today every sign is there if you disturb it you know water is not same anymore air is not same anymore Soil is not same anymore. Forest is not same anymore. So, um, according to me, the humans have gone really crazy in uh, destroying its own house, where which is the only place in the entire universe, in finite universe, uh, that people can live and survive. So, it is very much duty. It is very much required to be sustainable and uh, live according to the laws of nature. Live in the sync with the nature, because we are part of the nature, which we have forgotten. I, unfortunately, that we are yeah. part of the nature. So, is achieving sustainable living possible? And if yes, is it possible in an overcrowded country like India? Well, definitely possible. Sustainable living, the Mother Earth, you know, as Gandhi ji very rightly said it, you know, that there is enough in the world for everyone's need. But not for anyone. So, Mother Earth is very generous. It can. It is already sustaining billions and trillions of you know, animals, insects, and of course human beings. Now. And it is feeding everybody. You know, it is feeding for millions of years. So, living sustainably is definitely possible. Can it uh, sustain eight billion people, nine billion people, ten billion people? Yes, it can sustain. But what it cannot do is it cannot satisfy your greed. What it cannot do is it cannot, you know, accept the imbalance. What it cannot do is it cannot accept the going beyond the laws of nature. And uh, uh, and therefore, sustainability is very sustainable. Living is possible only if you are within those boundaries. I believe that. 99.9 percent people are not even aware what is those bonds. What are those bonds? You know, for example, everybody knows we should increase our GDP. You know, but if I ask two questions to anybody in the world, in all prime ministers, number one, if I ask them GDP should increase, that's a great idea. How much should it increase? Should it increase five percent, seven percent, ten percent, twelve percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent, twenty-five percent? Can anybody give me an answer? Probably not. Huh? GDP should increase. How much it should increase? I don't think anybody knows. You never defined it how much it should increase, and therefore, like a mad rush, 
let it increase if it is increasing with 5% then we ask question why not 6% if it is increasing with 6% the question why not 7% if it is 7% why not 10% so nobody knows it's like a really madness out there second question if i ask how long should gdp increase okay great it is increasing with 5% should it increase for another 20 years another 30 years another 50 years how long does anybody know the answer no so therefore when we are running like a headless chicken we cannot be sustained you know it's like a, uh, i keep giving example you know ki bandar kya atma us tarah the unfortunate part is modern humans are exactly like bandar kya atma us tarah jab se ye coal oil and gas which is us tarah हमारे हाथ लग गए और हमको पता नहीं किधर जाने कितना जीडीपी बढ़ाना है और कब तक बढ़ाना है between our wants and needs well i mean uh, so the answer is very simple and again we kind of lose track of it that whatever we do in our life whatever why do we do it you know first of all let me bring the plato in here because uh, plato the greek philosopher he said you know every every king should be a philosopher and every philosopher should be a king what i'm saying is Until unless we we think philosophically, we cannot encompass the bigger picture of life. We we do not understand the bigger picture of life. Why? Because we are not philosophical. We are only economic. So, in our life, we see that one rupee is enough to survive. We are not. You know, we have done it. We have got a good job. There are other questions. You know, if I invested in a property, rates will increase. So, but. how much property should increase and whether it is affecting my nature nobody knows whether it is affecting my mental status nobody knows what is the impact of excessive use of energy or excessive possession of resources on my mental status nobody knows so uh, uh, because we lose the track of a bigger picture we you know tend to make mistakes and uh, i think the this education of bigger picture that the planet has been here for billions of years the human life has been here for lakhs of years you know there are millions and millions of other creatures that are there in the entire life of the planet we are just small dot in terms of time and also in terms of space the universe is infinite so when we look from that bigger perspective you realize are i'm nothing and then i'm nothing then why the hell i am you know going around and making all mess here and there and there and then you see are what is the purpose why i am why i am here no i gave gave example and that we what is the purpose nobody knows ha ah, everybody wants to be happy but when ask people you know are they happy they are not so the whole idea is that we want to be happy you know i keep simple example are there humans who will go to the god and say you know god abhi bahut sukh ho gaya mujhe thoda sa dukh de do kabhi aisa dekha hai nahi kyun dukh kyun nahi mangte bhai ha koi bolta hai bhagwan se ki aap mujhe bahut shanti ho gayi mujhe thodi ashanti de do kyun why because being happy you know getting love being loved is the nature of humans that is ultimately what we want but are we working for that or we are working for money we are working for money so you get money but you don't get what you are looking for so we lose a track of a bigger picture as a result of there is a mess otherwise aadmi ko khush hone ke liye kya chahiye kya chahiye bhai jiske paas paise hote hain wo bhi dukhi hota hai aur jiske paas nahi hote hain wo bhi hota hai jiske paas paise hote hain bhi khush hota hai jiske nahi hote wo bhi khush hota hai pata hai garib log bhi kitne khush hote hain to khush hone ke liye kya chahiye kuch nahi chahiye bas kuch jahan pe ho jaise ho just be happy that's it so wants or need mein fir bacha ka difference wants are artificial hai which your mind has somewhere wanting it but you will not get it it's like a, that mirage na tumko you know it's like um jyada paisa hone se sukh milega 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 par milta hi nahi 
you keep running behind it keep running you keep running behind the comfort but is the bed in the five star hotel is more comfortable or my bed is more comfortable <laughs> this is very comfortable right it's nice i i accepted it that's it so i think um, the wants are very a uh, kind of uh, it's a desire of a untrained mind when your mind is not trained to look for what we are actually looking for then you will get lost into this and that and ye mobile liye aur bada se hi sahi but can you get things from proper spot proper perspective you can be happy in any situation any situation that is what we need to understand that is what the young generation has not been taught i mean it is mistake of you know, our parents that it is really not been taught which is part of it so being philosophical is very important in life being spiritual is even more important in life हमको क्या लगता है यंग जनरेशन को कि जब 60 साल के हो जाएंगे तब हम स्पिरिचुअल हो जाएंगे जब कुछ कुछ करने लायक नहीं बचेंगे आई गारंटी यू यू बिकम स्पिरिचुअल राइट नाउ यू विल एंजॉय योर लाइफ लाइक एनीथिंग योर लाइफ विल बी मच मोर सक्सेसफुल बिकॉज एवरीथिंग यू आर गोइंग टू डू विद द फन एंड एक्साइटमेंट एंड एंथोजियाजम बिकॉज द लाइफ इज इन दैट मोमेंट लाइफ इज नॉट आफ्टर गेटिंग जॉब आफ्टर गेटिंग मेरिड आफ्टर गेटिंग पोजिशन आफ्टर हैविंग चिल्ड्रन लाइफ इज इन एवरी मोमेंट So when you start living every moment, you will, you know, really enjoy everything, and then this wants and needs will become equal. The gap is there because your mind is not trained. Moving ahead, let's talk about Energy Swaraj moment and the yatra that you have begun. So, what is Energy Swaraj moment, and what was your goal, or what is the goal behind this moment? Well, I mean, the the whole game uh, that has gone wrong on this planet is the game of energy. You know, first of all, energy is everything. Our internal energy. When we are in a bad mood, you know, when we are low in energy, how do we feel? Bad, irritating, negative, less creative. On the other hand, if I am positive, excited, you know, enthusiastic, energetic, how do I feel? Excited, enthusiastic, creative. So our own life is a game of energy, and the whatever happens around us. the the moment of the vehicles this light running computer running everything is also energy so we need energy and uh, in today's term today's modern economic term uh, every social and economic parameters are related to energy so we need energy and we have been using energy in the form of renewable energy but ever since we got these three things you know coal oil and gas uh what has happened is we started using more and more more and more producing more consuming more producing more consuming more and is these these three sources are made out of carbon so when you burn them you emit carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which is now you know resulting in a global warming and the climate change today 85% of our energy requirement comes from coal oil and gas which means 85% of the activities that you do and i do and everybody does The results in a climate change, 85 percent. Now this climate change is, you know, uh, is co- cause a bigger contradiction in our life. Because why? The simple thing is, why do we want? Uh, we want a lot of comfort in our life, right? So what we do for getting comfort, we use a lot of energy, and 85 percent of it comes from the coal, oil, and gas, which results in a CO2 emission, which results in a climate change. As a result of climate change. There is a discomfort. So look at the contradiction. We started looking for comfort. What we are getting in the end? Discomfort. So that's why I said the game of energy has gone terribly wrong because we try to do many things in a very short time, and therefore the whole idea of energy Swaraj is correct that game. And the game can there can only be one way of correcting that game is base your life, which is. Based on infinite source of energy, coal is not infinite, oil is not infinite, gas is not infinite, right? In fact, sometimes I feel so surprised. How can ever an economist think that we can base such an economy based on this three sources itself is a finite? How can this be possible? How can we make it based on the three sources itself is a finite? How can we make it based on the three sources itself is a finite? How can we make it based on the three sources itself is a finite? How can we make it based on the three sources itself is a finite? Last seventy, eighty years mainly, and let us come back to the center of our existence. And I keep asking people, you know, what do you use solar energy? People say no. I have to remind, खाना खाते हो, that is solar energy, isn't it? सांस लेते हो, solar energy. 
पानी पीते हैं सोलर एनर्जी आवर एक्सिस्टेंस इट सेल्फ इज सोलर एनर्जी सो वॉट वी हैव टू डू ट्रेक दैट वी लॉस टू कम बैक टू देंटर ऑफ आवर एनर्जी एंड द सेंटर ऑफ आवर एनर्जी इज ओनली सोलर एनर्जी everything is manifested because of the solar energy so if we can correct our energy game because everything is driven by energy if we can correct that game of energy and run our life <clears throat> based on our economy again based on solar energy i think uh, we will be back on track so doing this is energy swaraj now the whole model will also change because coal is not available everywhere you cannot supply coal power plant coal to everywhere and ask everyone to run your own power plant you can't do that rivers are not going to everybody's house so you can't have hydro power plant you can't supply nuclear fuel to everybody's house and say acha apna apna nuclear power plant chala bhai aaj ka fuel <laughs> you can't do that but solar can be done everywhere every roof can get us so therefore the whole model of generating energy and consuming energy will be different should be different the coal centralizing coal power plant was our compulsion it is not our choice but distributing the energy generation wherever people are living people are living everywhere on the planet now. so generation should happen everywhere on the planet and when you start generating everywhere on the planet and limit your consumption and then just start generating everywhere on the planet this becomes energy swaraj and the whole idea of this energy swaraj movement is that i personally believe that the governments all over the world they are elected for a very short time you know they are elected for 4 years and 5 years and when i traveled across the world in 2018 19 i could see that the same problem you feel in respect of your rich country or poor country developed countries are developing it doesn't matter because everybody is only knows only one dimension of growth that is economic at the cost of everything else so when if government cannot do and if the time available is very short climate clock is ticking and the time available is very short uh, the only way to do is by creating a public good and first time in the history of human being there is a problem which is a problem of every individual living on the planet earlier problem kiska hota tha ek desh ka hota tha ek jati ka ho sakta tha ek prant ka ho sakta tha this is a problem of the entire world so therefore you need to create a public movement not in one country not in one continent but the entire world and you need therefore a sufficiently long time and that is why i decided to do this 11 years long yatra so that um, i can put enough efforts to ensure that uh, we can create this movement everywhere in the world and in the form of energy swaraj so the whole idea of energy swaraj is not only india energy swaraj is required for the entire world because everybody needs energy solar energy is available everywhere and uh, we can generate energy wherever people are so this energy swaraj yatra is to create energy swaraj movement across the world you have published a book energy swaraj right yes so in that you have mentioned uh, about two fundamental rules mm-hmm. Uh, in that you have mentioned two fundamental rules uh, so can you please elaborate something on those well i mean uh, so again when you start looking things from a broader perspective you realize that uh, uh, there are boundaries you know within which we have to live and our planet itself is a you know limited surface area limited water limited soil so there are two fundamental rules that uh, i believe are essential dimension of sustaining sustaining human life on the planet you know not just the sustaining life if you want human life to survive on this planet you need to follow those two rules the first fundamental rule i call it is in an ecosystem of finite resources there has to be finite consumption and this is fundamental which means you can't violate it and if you are going to violate it you are going to pay for it so in an ecosystem of finite resources there has to be finite consumption and it is true and it's look at simple logic that our planet is finite the size is finite the resources are finite water soil river everything is finite and therefore whatever we are consuming it has to be finite but last 45 50 years what do we see production is increasing consumption is increasing that is not sustainable that cannot be sustainable no amount of science and technology can make it sustainable and therefore it is important to follow that rule 
if at all we want human life to survive on this planet. The second fundamental rule is when our resources are limited, and if you are going to centralize production, it will result in a, you know, unequal distribution of resources. Unequal distribution will also create inequity in the society, which will also be cause of the problem and violence in the society. So the second fundamental rule is, in an ecosystem of finite resources, there has to be distributed production, and that is what is required for sustainability. The basic idea of sustainability is limit your consumption, and whatever is your limited consumption, produce it locally, wherever you are, as much as possible. I mean, everything you can't do locally. But as much as possible, do it locally, and this is applicable to you know everything that we consume. We consume food, so limit your consumption, localize your production. We are consuming uh, clothes, so limit your consumption, localize your production. We are consuming energy, so limit your consumption, localize your production. So these are fundamental to every resource that we use, and uh, it is very clear that if you are going to violate this law. I don't think human life can survive on this planet for a very, very long time to come, and this we are seeing already. Uh, so we do not have choice; we are running out of time, and sooner than later we should start limiting to this too long. Unfortunately, we are violating both of them. When we are violating every day, every minute, you know, we are over-consuming. I'm sure all of you are aware about what is called Earth Overshoot Day. You know, Earth Overshoot Day is a concept which says. How much resources Earth can regenerate in one year, and how much time we take to consume those resources? So ideally, if we are in balance, the Earth Overshoot Day should come on December 31st. Then we are in balance. Whatever Earth is generating in one year, regenerating in one year, we are consuming in one year. So Earth Overshoot Day come on, should come on 31st January, December. You know when it is coming typically? End of July, 29th July, 28th, 30th July. That is where the Earth Overshoot Day, which means what? From that day onwards, till 31st December, we are over-consuming resources. Over-consuming. So as of today, we require an equivalent of 1.7 Earth resources. But there is no 1.7 Earth. There is only one Earth, which means we are depleting our resources. Which means we are depleting the nature itself. Which means we are depleting the chance of living on this planet itself. This can be taken in that way also. We are depleting the chance of living on this planet uh, with a solar PV.